Genesis 25, 21. Genesis 30, 22 through 23. Judges 13, 2 through 3. 1 Samuel 1, 19 through 20. Luke 1, 5 through 7. Okay, we're not going to really read the scriptures. I want to give you the scriptures as I go over the information. That way, if you want to take it home and read the scriptures, you can. But basically, what I'm going to be talking about is going to be in the scriptures. I just knew I needed some scriptures to refer to. Okay, we're going to go ahead and just have devotion. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, hair of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Okay, can we have a prayer, please? Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for being the God that you are. Thank you for the Bible study today, dear Lord. Let's come to the full glory of your name, dear Lord. Be in our hearts, be in our minds, dear Lord. Continue to bless Stephanie, dear Lord. Pray for the pastor as well. And most of all, dear Lord, continue to bless this class. In Jesus' name, dear Lord, in Jesus' name, do I pray. Amen. 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 It's me, it's me, oh Lord. Stand in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Stand in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Stand in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Stand in the need of prayer. It's not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. Stand in the need of prayer. It's not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. Stand in the need of prayer. It's in me, it's in me, it's in me, oh Lord. Stand in the need of prayer. It's in me, it's in me, it's in me, oh Lord. Stand in the need of prayer. One more prayer, please. This afternoon, dear Heavenly Father, we come before you to say thank you. We thank you for this chance, this opportunity to come together and study your word together. We thank you, Father, for life, health, and strength. We thank you for loving us, for keeping us, for guiding, directing, and protecting each and every one of us. Oh God, we thank you for each and every blessing. But most of all, we thank you for Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. Please forgive us of all our sins this day, for we know and realize that we all sin and go contrary to the way. We pray this afternoon for each and every individual. Some are sick, lost, confused. Some are on the streets, under the bridges. And dear God, we pray for the many people in the war-torn countries all over this world. And we lift up our teacher this afternoon. Yes. Give her the strength and the power to deliver your word and open our hearts and minds that we might receive it, O oh God, and share it with others. Be with us as we go through this lesson, as we go through our this day. It is these blessings and so very many, many more. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. 
Amen. And thank you, God. Amen. I'd like to um, say good afternoon and thank you so much for taking time to come out and um, listen to me. <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure um, attending Bible study and all the wonderful things. And um, I made up my mind, as you all know, Sunday to join the church. And I believe that it was the right decision. It wasn't a decision that I took lightly. Uh, it's a decision that I prayed about a lot, thought about a lot. And so I feel like at this place and time, I'm in the right place with the right people. So thank Amen. you so much. Amen. Okay, my lesson today is the goodness of the Lord. And Amen. the subtopic is from barrenness to bless. Barrenness. How many of you here today can name some of all of the women in the Bible who were barren before God was appeared? Anybody? Rachel. Okay. Sarah. Yes. Uh, and I think Rebecca. I'm not yes. sure. Yes. So many of them. There's, uh, there's some more. Okay, that's okay. Okay, um, in Genesis, there were three. Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel. In um, Judges, there was a wife of Man Manoah. She's a mother of Samson. And Samuel, it was, of course, Hannah. And Hannah is one of my favorites because Hannah, um, her life kind of uh, had a little bit to do with me. I don't, uh, I don't, there's not two wives in my family, uh, or my husband's not married to two wives. But, uh, she had a hard time, you know, having a child. And so I really like her. Okay, there was also Michael. Now, I didn't understand this because I thought Michael had children by her second husband, but I researched this, and they promised me that she was a daughter of Saul, and she was David's wife, and because of her being upset because he was dancing halfway naked and praising the Lord, that it said she remained barren until her death. Mm. I didn't know that. And then the other one is Elizabeth, and she's in Luke 5, and where you would find Michael, she was also in 2 Samuel 6. And 23. In the Old Testament, some of the women were treated as property. They were, in some cases, they were lower than the animals. You know, they really didn't have a, a statue in life. They were there only just to produce sons or to have babies. And a lot of them, if they didn't have children, usually the husband, uh, he remarried someone else, you know, so he could have children. Thank God they're not doing that today, but in some cases, I think they are divorcing people. But it says, okay, I don't know if you guys saw The Chosen. Uh, it's a movie. If you didn't see it, you know, uh, maybe one time we can have a movie uh, evening or a movie night, and I'd be happy to bring them because that's another version of uh, the Bible, you know, like the Ten Commandments, and then there's another one out. But this one here, I really like this because it's a low budget movie, but you can't really tell it's a low budget movie because to me, it really breaks down the scenes and it gives you a perspective of something that wasn't in the Ten Commandments. It sticks closely to the Bible, but it takes just a little leeway to kind of make things, I guess, easier for the uh, layman to understand. So I really do like that. And like I said, I would like to share that, you know, with the group if possible. Uh, one of the examples was, remember the woman at the well, when Jesus met the woman at the well? Well, she had been, I think, married six or seven times. And the man that she was with, she was not married to this man. But in the movie, I guess this was the last husband that she was married to because she was at the well I don't know how those women did that. Thank God we don't have to do that anymore. You know, this long bar with these big old things. And, and then I'm like, well, why aren't the men doing that? You know, I mean, it's heavy, you know. But they were they had to go early in the morning and, you know, go to this well. I think it was, what was it, Jacob's well? You know, somebody's well. But they had Abraham's well. They had to, anyway, they had to get the water. And then they put them on this big old bucket and they had to walk miles and miles and miles back, you know, back to their home. So she was at the well. She went to the well uh, during the day because all of the women knew what type of woman she was. And so they held that against her. And you know, that's strange. We do the same thing today. You know, uh, people come to the church 
and they're not dressed properly or you know they smell or you know just a problem and then instead of us embracing them we turn our nose up or we scoot over or we get up and move and you know a lot of those people don't come back you know we as church people we need to govern ourselves accordingly because if you think about it None of us is worth what Jesus did. You know, right. Jesus came and he died right. on the cross for us, right. you know, and we were not worthy of that, you know. Right. So we really need to make sure that if we get someone to come in, make them feel uh, welcome. Yeah. You know, I visited this church a year and a half ago, and I think I came a couple of Sundays, but I didn't feel that, mm, that it took me to push me over. So, of course, I was in the, uh, I was looking for a new church home. So I visit a lot of the churches in this neighborhood, and I visit uh, a couple of other churches. But this time when I came, I felt that love and that come on in and have a seat. I was amazed at how many people uh, opened up their hearts to me. They didn't even know me, but they opened up their hearts, and I felt like they were genuine in their concern and their love. And so I went home and I told my husband, I said, you know, I said, we have come full circle because his mom and stepfather, like I said, they moved here and uh, they attended this church for a long time. Mm -hmm. And my husband came to Sunday school and I didn't understand why they allowed him to go home after Sunday school. <laughs> but he always said, well, we went to Sunday school every morning. And I said, well, what about church? You know, and he said, well, no, you know, and I thought, well, okay, whatever, you know. But anyway, so. We have come full circle because not only are we living in the same house mm -hmm. that they had when they first came to Dallas, uh, I have now joined the same church. And so, like I said, I said we've come full circle and the only thing to make that circle complete is that you get up and you come and you join. Yeah. <laughs> but I have learned over the years not to pressure him because the more I talk to him about coming to church, the more he pulls away. And that's unusual because my husband was raised in church. You know, he, he was raised in church. So, you know, I tell the, tell the Lord, or you know, I ask the Lord, I said, you know, that's your son, you deal with him. You know, I said, I'm just blue in the face trying to get him to come to church. And, and you know, I've done everything I feel like humanly possible. So I said, if that, if that is your desire, then you deal with it, you know, so that's what I've done now, you know, I just, I don't fuss at him about not coming, I just go home and rub it in and say, man, we had a really good time at church today, and I start, to, and I even told him about you, and I showed him the video, you know, from Sunday, I said, now see, <laughs> and of course, he looked at it, and he smiled, and he recognized you, and said, no, no, you know, and then he gave it back to me, and I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> anyway. Okay, she uh, presented, the lady at the well, like I said, she went home, and I, I assumed that this was her last husband, because it was so strange, she presented him with papers of divorce. And so he asked her, he said, well, what's going on? He said, the man you're with, he said, you're afraid to let me see him? So I thought, oh, okay, you know. And so he threw them in the fireplace, because he said, a woman cannot divorce a man. The husband has to divorce the woman. And he said, you are my property, and I don't give my property away. So mm -hmm. he threw the papers into the fireplace. But later on, after he went to see uh, one of the times Jesus was on the mount, you know, uh, preaching and feeding uh, the people, when she uh, invited them to come and spend the night and so when she came in, I mean, when they knocked on the door and he opened the door, oh, he was a changed person, you know, because he was like in a wheelchair or a chair and, you know, he was just grumpy and everything. When he was standing up, smiling and laughing and he said, come on in, you know, he said, which one of you is Jesus, you know, and they started laughing and Jesus stepped forward and he told him, he said, well, I only have, I think it was like eight of them. He said, well, I only have five bedrooms. He said, and one of them is, is haunted. And so the, uh, the man that was playing Jesus, he said, oh, I want that one, you know. And uh, I think it was Matthew, maybe not Matthew, but it was one of the guy's disciples said, well, I don't know about that. He said, because I'm afraid of ghosts, you know. Well, the guy was teasing, but they didn't know that. So anyway, uh, so that was one of the things. And it says, each one of these women that were barren, they prayed for children. They prayed and they prayed and they prayed. Okay, we all know the story about Hannah. Hannah was the first wife, and there was another wife, and she was able to have children, and she used to make fun of Hannah, you know, and hold it over her head. And so Hannah was Hannah would cry, and she was hurt because she really wanted kids. 
And I thought this was really ironic. And I said, well, you know, men will be men. Her husband, you know, asked her one time at dinner, he said, well, why are you so sad? Aren't I better to you than seven or 10 sons? And I thought, he still doesn't get it. <laughs> he really doesn't get it. It's not so much about him being a wonderful husband. It was about her desire to bless him with children. And uh, she really wanted children. And, uh, you know, that's really hard. Even today, there are a lot of people that want kids. But it says prayer changes things. Remember when Pastor uh, Haynes preached about Tyler Perry, abusive father, mm -hmm. and how he used to beat his mom and, you know, beat him and never showed him any love? Well, the part that I got uh, out of it and that I really liked is the fact that she knew how to pray. And she taught Tyler Perry how to pray. And so, uh, like I said, prayer changes things, you know, and, and I can I can attest to that because I have gone through things in my life where I couldn't do nothing but pray. You know, I had done everything I thought I could do and nothing ever changed. So I started praying and I prayed and I prayed. And, you know, uh, God doesn't always answer our prayers right then. You know, sometimes it's like, yes, sometimes it's like, no, sometimes it's like, wait. Well, let me tell you that waiting, woo, sometimes it gets old and sometimes it gets old. It's a long process. You know, you are just waiting and you think that God is not going to answer. And then, you know, you finally come, if you stick with it, you finally come to the re realization that the Lord has already answered your prayer. Sometimes it's our attitudes mm -hmm. that make him pause, you know, because sometimes we are, we don't act like we're very grateful, you know, for the things that he's already done, not the things that we're asking him to do. But if you, you know, it says count your blessings. I love that song because if you really sit down and count your blessings, yes. you'd be surprised how yes. much the Lord has yes. done for you. Mm -hmm. And then you will be able to sing this song that says, if you don't do anything else, you've already done enough. How many of us really feel that way? As yes. you look back on your life, if the Lord doesn't give you not one more blessing, would you be satisfied mm -hmm. with what he's already done for you? Yes. You know, that's a question that we really need to stop and think about. Okay, unfortunately, uh, we were talking about uh, Tyler Perry's father, you know, how he beat his wife and, and beat his son. Unfortunately, that sinful practice still exists today in so many homes where children are present. In many of the third world uh, nations, this is still a practice. And not only in those countries, but also in the land of the free, America. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of that going on yes. because during the, I don't know if you know this, but during the COVID epidemic, pandemic, this became a common practice again. You know, women were being beaten, kids were being beaten. You know, mm -hmm. they, uh, the, um, let me see, the rate rose for the mother and the children that were out looking for a safe haven because the men were drinking. But it, it wasn't just one-sided. You know, there are some abusive women out there, but they chose to uh, just, you know, I guess look at the men, for the men had started drinking and had started gambling. And they weren't doing any of these things before. They may have done them in the past, but they weren't doing anything. But the pandemic, uh, you know, by you being locked up together, you know, a lot of couples don't get along. You know, they have these children and they fight all day long. They go to work and they come home and they fight. They pick up the kids. The kids are scared, you know, so, you know, it just heightened that. And so, uh, like I said, the shelters, they were overrun. They were asking people to donate and asking people if you have a room in your home, you know, to help these people. Because, like I said, it really uh, turned, it was a bigger pandemic than the COVID pandemic, if you can imagine. But we all know God changes things when prayers or our praises go up, blessings rain down. Okay, at 90 years old, Sarah was blessed with a son. I cannot imagine having a baby at 90 years old. And I don't want to be blessed with that baby that I don't have at 90 years old. Rebecca was blessed with two nations in her womb. And we see the result of that with what's going on now. You know, these are cousins fighting cousins. Mm -hmm. You know, these people have been fighting from day one. You know, it seems like they don't know anything but fighting and arguing and fussing. And what a lot of people fail to realize
Israelites, you know, they're fussing and being upset with Israel, saying, well, Israel shouldn't be there. But see, what they failed to realize, I tell people all the time, go read your Bible. That land was promised to Abraham before you and I were even thought of, you know, much less born. I said, so you cannot take sides, you know, because you don't know the history behind that. You know, I said, they have just been fighting. I said, and they're going to fight till the end of time. You know, I said, so if you can't, you know, the old saying is, if you can't say something good, don't say anything at all. You know, and so I told them all the time, I said, be careful how you judge Israel. Because the Bible says, if you bless Israel, I will bless you. If you curse Israel, I will curse you. So I tell people, be very careful. Uh, Rebecca, uh, Rachel's womb was finally open. Uh, she wanted children. And her husband told her, well, you know, she went to him and asked him, you know, pray to God, you know, I want children. He said, what? And he said, well, am I God? You know, God close your womb. But see, he didn't take responsibility. I believe, I don't know for sure, but I believe God closed her womb because Leah, even though he was tricked into marrying Leah, that was still his wife. You know, and so uh, Rachel was the one that was beautiful. Leah had, you know, she couldn't see very well and she wasn't quite as pretty. But then so he played favoritism. And so he went with the one he loved. Yes, he was tricked, but remember, he was the trickster. So he got tricked, you know. And so uh, I believe that that is why Rachel, the Lord, uh, closed her womb and waited to see if he was going to change, you know, after he had been blessed to have these children, if he was going to change and maybe love her a little bit more or care for her a little bit more or show her more uh, respect or whatever. And so he failed to realize that that was just as much as his fault as it was, you know, whatever God's decision, you know, for her not to have. But the Lord listened and he finally uh, blessed her. And, you know, and I believe he was going to bless her anyway. You know, like I said, it comes with that no, yes, wait. So she was in the waiting uh, holding zone. Yes, she was in the waiting holding zone for a long time, but he still, you know, God never fails. He never fails. And he never, never. promises us anything that he doesn't do. He's not like us. He keeps his word. Mm -hmm. He keeps his promise. And if you don't believe it, you're here today. He gave us all grace and mercy. You know, we didn't deserve any of that, you know, but he blessed us anyway to see another day. Fast forward to Hannah. Like I said, Hannah is my favorite. In the biblical days, a, a woman's a wife's main purpose was to produce sons, okay? They accepted the daughters. They didn't have a choice, but they really wanted sons to carry on the name. It says, Hannah prayed, and she was blessed after so many years with a son. And we all know her story, how she went and she prayed and the priest thought she was drunk and he finally, mm -hmm. she finally told him and he finally blessed her. And so she wanted a son for so many years. She received the goodness of the Lord and returned him back to the Lord in gratitude. Now mm -hmm. that to me is why she's my favorite because after all these years of wanting a child and praying for a child and just, you know, I mean, that's all you wanted was a child. And then to be blessed with this child, mm -hmm. And then to give him back to the Lord. Now that's faith and that's love, you know. And then she was rewarded with more children after that. Okay, just in case you may think this pain is a thing of the past, think again. And if you don't mind, I'd like to share my personal stories about the pain and the sorrow. I have always wanted children but God. For a long time, I could not understand why we were denied having children. I am blessed with a good, loving, and a caring husband, a warm place that we could have been happy to share, but it was not our blessing to receive. There were times when I didn't understand why, especially when you read about babies being placed in dumpsters or trash cans, they're being abused, set on fire, uh, murdered, starved to death, dropped off in the woods and just left. You know, all this crazy stuff that is going on with these children. I used to tell people all the time, to me, children are one of the greatest gifts of God. Yes. There's a lot of them out there, yes. but to me, mm -hmm. that one is in the top 10, maybe right. the top five, you know, they, and so to be rewarded your, with the fruit of your womb, you know, to me, you should do everything humanly possible 
to keep that child on the right road. Mm -hmm. And to me, you should be grateful every day you get up and look at that child because there are so many women out there that want children. Mm -hmm. And I believe that a lot of them probably would be very good parents, you know, and I'm just amazed at a lot of the women that are, for some reason, we will never know because God's ways are not our ways, mm -hmm. but you know, I wonder about that sometimes. In times, I, in so many times, I thought that I had made peace with God's decision only to have that pain return over and over again. Even now, at times, it returns to steal my joy. Uh, what I mean by this is that on my job, I stayed, I worked at Children's Medical Center for 33 years in the lab. It was my first and only full-time job. Uh, I was blessed to retire at 55, so I've been retired now 16 years. But a lot of the young people, when they would get pregnant, sometimes that was still my joy. I know nothing is supposed to steal it, but trust me, sometimes that was still my joy. Sometimes I would go into the restroom and I would just cry and I would say, why, Lord? Why not me? But then, of course, you know, I'd wash my face up and go back and, you know, he would ease that pain and it would be okay until maybe the next time I saw. Or if I saw a woman with a baby and, you know, people would say, oh, he's so cute, he's so this. But that, you know, that was like a knife. You know, stabbing me in the heart because I always thought I was a good person. I always thought, you know, that I tried to do, you know, what that said the Lord. Sure, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. But I, I was raised as a baby, you know, uh, in church. I didn't have a choice. You know, you either went, you had to be dying or dead if you didn't go to church. So, you know, you have to go to church. You know, my mother said, everybody in this house, if you're not dead or dying, you know, we're going to church. You know, we went to Sunday school on Sundays. We were in church all day long. We went to Sunday school. We went to, uh, you know, 11 o'clock service. If they had 3 o'clock service, we went to that too. We got chocolates. You know, we went to that too. Uh, we went to uh, training union. You know, we went to 730. Like I said, all day long was devoted to church, you know. And uh, sure, growing up, um, I didn't like it, but I didn't have a choice, you know, because I think I've said this before to the mm -hmm. class. I was afraid of God and my mom, because if my mom said she was going to do something, believe me, she did it, you know. Yeah, it was yeah. no yeah. doubt in your mind. If she says, I'm going to get you, you just better start praying mm -hmm. and thinking. And, you know, I was smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She'd go out there and get that sweet. So I'd start screaming from the time she walked in that door. <laughs> you know, the more I screamed, I got like a little couple of hits, and I'd go about my business. Well, my sister was a little bit stubborn. And so, you know, sometimes I say, you better cry, girl, because she don't whoop you till you cry, you know. So I told her, I said, you better get like your baby sister. You better start screaming and hollering, you know. Like I said, I got out of that, you know. <laughs> but, you know, and, that, and I think that's kind of what's wrong with some of the children today, you know. You know, they don't have jobs, you know. They're not paying for any of those bills, you know. I mean, so why should they have so much say so? You know, I'm in a store. And I hear kids say, I don't want that. That word would have never came out of my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Because you wouldn't have got anything. And it, it just all depends on who's looking. You might have got a back hand. Yeah, my mama had a mean back hand. Okay, it seemed like it would reach way over there. You know, but I'm just saying, you know, they'll come in or either their parents are trying to buy them. Say, I don't want that. Oh, we man. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes I look at that and I say, well, that's why God didn't give me no children. <laughs> because I believe that I would have been the heavy in the family. I believe I'd been just like my mom and she didn't take no stuff. Let me tell you, she, you know, she was a very sweet person, but she was firm. You know, and when she say move, she meant move, like right now. Now, none of this 10 minutes later, did I tell you to move? No. Nah. She meant when she said move, you yeah. better get the move right then. And ears, man, she could hear. You know, we uh, we lived in kind of like a duplex, one side, and my grandmother, we always lived, the family always lived together, grandmother, you know, her kids and us, and it was a big, happy family, nine of us. So she would be on one side, and, you know, I might do something, and she'd come over and she'd say, what did you say? Mm. And I'd be like, mm. <laughs> And she could tell you exactly what you said. You know, I'm like, wow, you know, so I believe she had ears and eyes in the back of her head because she could see everything, she could hear everything. There was just no fool in her. We need some of those mothers today. We really do. We need some. Because I saw some things uh, 
you know, in the church a couple of times, and I thought, well, thank God she ain't my sister, or mm. she wasn't growing up when I grew up, or thank God she wasn't my child, mm -hmm. you know, because, I mean, the, it was disrespectful, you know, mm -hmm. but like I said, you know, to each his own, I'm not judging, I'm no. just saying, you know, we need some of that grandmother and some of the parents that we had when we were growing up. God knows best. And as the sign says, he can see way down the road. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But through it all, my faith in each low point was made stronger. And I have learned that no matter what we go through, God is still in control. I mean, with all the stuff that's going on, you know, we don't have to be upset. We don't have to worry because God's got this. He's in control. You know, nothing happens without his permission. You know, Satan can't do anything to us without God's permission. You know, so we need to um, keep smiling, keep praising the Lord, keep telling people about the Lord because God is good all the time and all the time God is good. You know, he knows what's best even when we don't. There is nothing too hard for God and contrary, and contrary to what some believe, his way is the only way. But some of us women not being able to have children, we are still reminded of the sting of infertility, loss. For many, it's a lifetime of sorrow because they, I, or, you know, we are reminded of it every time. Every day we are reminded of it. And when we see a newborn baby and the joy that it brings, the shame and the pain returns, but God. Okay, now that's the end of my lesson. And if if you will indulge me for a minute, I want to sing this song. This is the song that I sing when I'm depressed, when I'm upset, when I go, I still have those moments, not as much, but I still have those moments when I see a newborn baby and I go, why not me, Lord? I still have that, you know. I have tried to shut that door. I have tried to put locks on it. I have tried to do everything, but it just never seemed to go away. The low gets lighter, but it's still there. It never goes away. And sometimes I am amazed when it shows up, because like I said, I'm thinking I done buried it, mm -hmm. but it's still there. Okay, this is a song that says, Gotta Believe, and it's by Tasha Cobbs Limit. Excuse me. I just gotta believe there is goodness around the corner, and something better is in store for me. Someday I will see. There's a reason for all these tears, and there's an answer to these prayers. I just gotta believe it's gonna work out like I knew it would. I'll finish stronger than I thought I could. There's a rainbow behind the clouds. The sun is bursting out. This can't be the end. I know that there is so much more, and I will find an open door if I only believe ooh, that this is just one page in my story. And if I keep breathing, and if I keep believing, it's going to work out like I knew it would. I'm getting stronger than I thought. I could. There's a rainbow behind the clouds. The sun is bursting out. Just believe. You gotta believe. Just believe. You gotta believe. Oh, just believe. Yeah, you gotta believe. Yeah, just believe. Yes, it's working, it's working for you. Yes, it's working, it's working for you. You gotta believe. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
you so much. Uh, it was fun doing this. It really was fun. Uh, I did uh, like waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes he would wake me up at 3 and 2, and I'd write a little bit down, and I'd try to go back to sleep. And the next day, he'd wake me up at 2 o'clock, and I'd write some more stuff down, you know. And so this went on for about a week. You know, but uh, it was fun, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. Yes, so, yes. Thank you so much for coming out, and hopefully you learned something or got something, you know, that you can um, use every day. And like I said, we have just got to get a rain on these children. You know, we have got to let them know yes. that we love them and that, you know, there's a brighter day ahead. You know, all of this killing and fighting and stuff, you know, that's just not necessary. And you know, the little ones, you have to start when they're little. Yeah, right. You really have to start, you know, when they're little and they go to pick that stuff off the table. Don't right. move the stuff. But we have got to start because if you, I don't know if you paid attention, but we've almost lost a generation of children. You know, so the young ladies are out there fighting harder than the men. You know, they're out knocking people out and stealing stuff and pulling guns and stuff. We, we've got to step up to the plate, you know, and we've got to do what we can while we can. So once again, thank you so much for coming out and thank you. Do we have a sick report? Is there a sick report? Uh, just pray for uh, the Hancock family. You know, Kate died. Mm. When he died? Uh huh. Uh, he died uh, the other day, two days ago. The funeral is going to be Saturday. I get. I get you said more. Anthony. Yeah. Okay, Anthony. that's what I thought. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. It was Saturday. Let us to continue to pray for our sick and our shut-in. And um, I, I have a little thing that I do. I like to send out birthday cards, and I like to send out um, cards to people that are shut-in. Mm -hmm. That was something that my mom did, and when she passed, uh, I took it up. I was already doing it, but I really uh, took it up. So those are some of the things that I like to do. It's just to spread like a little cheer. And uh, before I joined the church, I. I would give the cards to one of the ladies that is in my Sunday school class, and I'd tell her, I'd say, here, pass these out. I said, when they ask you who it is, I said, don't tell them. Because I'm used to doing things behind the scene. I'm not used to being out front. You know, I what I do, I do it from my heart. But I don't want or expect, you know, any, any pats on the back or whatever. I just do it just because, you know. But then... Um, when I joined church, I said, well, the cat's out of the bag now. <laughs> but um, thank, thank you so much again. And if nothing else, I guess we could stand and uh, dismiss. If nothing else. <laughs> I just want to say something. Yeah, you did, because you told me I know her husband. I'm like, hey. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. <laughs> First of all, I, I, I hate I missed when you joined church Sunday. Oh, I knew it was coming. It's, it's, on, it's, on, uh, it's, it's on the internet. Yeah, yeah. You know? But I was like, uh, someone called to check on me and told me that you had joined church. That's why I knew well, it was coming. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I didn't get the right hand coach. You better be this Sunday. So you still didn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there's nothing else, uh, we can just stand and we can be dismissed. We appreciate that now. Because it was right on time. Couldn't be no better. Right. Right. Ain't going to be listening for that high voice. We're going to be listening for that high voice. When you hit that high note on Sunday. Oh, she joined the choir. Oh, yeah. I joined the choir before. Yes, she sure did. I joined the choir you know, I got it. I got it. I came to Sunday school, uh, Bible study, uh, women's ministry, uh, choir, and then I joined the church. Oh, she didn't shout me because when I was looking for you, I said, she knew that they didn't hear what they did when they opened the door. And I looked at you because I said, she was in the choir. They let me. Okay, can you close it out? Okay. Attorney God, once again, we just want to say thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for God wants to be in the presence of your holiness. Thank you, dear Lord, for Sister Pedaway, dear Lord, uh, a great teacher, dear Lord, a great person, dear Lord. 
Thank you for being on our boldness and the power to teach your people, to teach your people the truth, dear Lord. And let us, dear Lord, not just take uh, lesson lightly, dear Lord, but go and spread it to a dying word, dear Lord, and to be a blessing for our kids, dear Lord, knowing that they are a blessing to us. We ask you, dear Lord, to continue to bless Bethany as a whole and bless our pastor in his absence while he's on vacation. As you, dear Lord, just give us traveling grace as we head back to our destination. I ask it all in your daughter's son's name. Lord, say, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. amen.